It's Thursday, February 24th. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel. And last night, or last morning over in Europe, world history has changed. For the first time since September 1st, 1939, a superpower is marching across Europe. Yesterday morning, in the pre-dawn darkness, as Vladimir Putin was wrapping up another one of his bizarre speeches, his troops rolled in across the entire country of Ukraine from the north and the south and the east, well beyond that initial area of concern, that area held by the separatists in Ukraine. In so doing, Vladimir Putin now has complete air superiority over the entire country of Ukraine. As part of these attacks, Putin has been able to take out and get a hold of the airports, air defense systems, missile defense systems, lines of communication, and he's following this up with a strong cyber attack against Ukraine. As we've seen, the standard steps in preparation for war have played out. There are usually three steps or two steps before war. First, you have diplomacy, which has failed, sanctions, which we're going to blow the last breach of sanctions through the barrel today, and then finally, war. What is Putin's initial tactical plan here for Ukraine. He wants Zelensky out. He wants regime change. He wants a pro-Russian person put back in charge of Ukraine and bring Ukraine back in to Russia. What is Putin's strategic plan? He wants to bring much of what was lost during the end of the Cold War in 1991 back under Russian control. One of the concerns going forward is, will Russia attempt to increase its access to its port in Kalin Kaliningrad, one of the only ice-free ports in the area, by attacking Lithuania or Poland, both of which are NATO countries? However, if Putin were to make a move like that on a NATO country, that would invoke Article 5 of the North Atlantic Treaty. Right now we're at Article 4 here where the parties will consult together whenever in the opinion of any of them the territorial integrity, political independence, or security of any of the parties is threatened. Article 5 is that if you attack a NATO country, NATO will assist the party or parties so attacked by taking forthwith individually and in concert with the other parties such action as it deems necessary, including the use of armed force to restore and maintain the security of the North Atlantic area. And of course, Ukraine is not a part of NATO. The NATO member countries here are shown in blue. Thus, only Article 4 applies at this time. This attack follows on the heels of the attack on Georgia in 2008, located right down here, and the annexation of Crimea, located right here, in 2014. In response, NATO troops and air power are increasing in NATO member countries that surround the area. Here's a look at the present numbers according to the BBC. But these actions are being done by one man, Vladimir Putin, and maybe a handful of oligarchs there in Russia. There is not a lot of support for what Putin is doing amongst his own people in Russia, and there is certainly world condemnation for his action. And there's one major new or more important weapon than ever, and that is the role of citizen journalists as the world is watching, showing us in real time what exactly is going on. Here's an example of the MiG-29s coming over Ukraine. Here's some closed circuit TV of a missile strike on that building right there. Now, they often say truth is the first casualty of war. We got to sort out the wheat from the chaff on these videos as they come in. This video claims to be a Russian Ka-52 helicopter that was shot down by Ukrainian forces. Blasted him pretty good on the left, left of the helicopter there. 
That looks authentic to me. These appear to be helicopter, Russian helicopter gunships. Not sure where the location of this is. Well, chaff and flares being launched by the helicopters to defend themselves against the missiles that are being launched at them. A very active war. Coming in in very low level to try and avoid missile and gunfire. It's very hard to shoot a moving target when it's way down low on the horizon. So it appears the Ukrainians are putting up some defense. The world is watching. Here's a missile strike near a residential. Wow. Wow, you saw him right there. Right here. Launches and hits it. The world is watching. And more damage from the missile strikes from Vladimir And more damage to what appears to be civilian locations the world is watching so i hope soon that there's a buildup of nato forces in the nato member countries and an effort to regain air superiority by the russians taking over the airfields here in ukraine there is no way to help supply the ukrainian forces other than through the borders here of the nato member forces if we can regain air superiority over the area and reopen some of those airports, we can get more aid into Ukraine to help them defend themselves against this Russian aggression led by Vladimir Putin. In the end, it's my hope that Putin overextends himself financially and militarily. And I know it doesn't matter much in a... <laughs> communist totalitarian regime but that the russian people themselves fight this aggression and come to see the reign of vladimir putin end hopefully this is the last gasp of vladimir putin thanks so much for your support thanks for watching the world is watching all of you citizen journalists out there pick up your cameras don't be afraid to show the world exactly what's going on. For the rest of us, we got to watch carefully the misinformation and disinformation that is going to that is continuing and will always pour out of Russia's disinformation campaign. <laughs>